How's it going lads? Today, I'm coming to you live from the United Kingdom to talk about... What is that? Ah, oh, it's one of the locals. Oh shit. Run. 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 Killing Floor 2. The most realistic London back alley simulator I've ever played. A bunch of people with questionable dental hygiene all trying to shank you at the train station. In all seriousness, Killing Floor 2 is an insane, horde massacring, blood splattering, and quasi terrorizing mess, and I fucking love it. In Killing Floor 2, you have quite a few options to choose from even before you get into a game. First, you have to choose a game mode and a perk. There aren't really many game modes, but they get the job done. First, you have basic survival. Try to survive a set amount of waves of Zeds, and then fight a boss and hopefully not die. Ah! Then you have a weekly, which is the same as survival, except the devs are fucking with you. Bobbleheads, tiny boys, spiders. Spice up the gameplay, and I mean, just look at them. Then you've got endless, which you guessed it, is just endless waves of Zeds, with a little bit of Tom fuckery now and then. It's fun for a little while until it gets so hard you want to scream or it gets so boring you want to scream. And finally, we have Survival Versus, which I actually think is a really interesting mo- It's dead. Well, now that we have that out of the way, it's time to move on to the classes. Here, there is a lot more variety for players of all different playstyles and levels of mental stability. All the classes are between two types of players, the normal ones and the clinically insane. I may or may not be a part of the second group. Now, I'll go into more detail about the weapons a bit later, because there's so many, but all the different classes are basically decided by the weapons. And their perks. But it's really about the weapons. The Commando and the SWAT are great basic classes with their arsenal of SMGs and assault rifles. While more mentally deranged classes like the Berserker and the Firebug use things like a literal lightsaber and something called the microwave gun. I promise. If you play this game, there is at least one class you'll like. But you didn't download this 80 gigabyte game to look at classes, did you? You downloaded it for, well. Oh boy, my favorite seat. Uh oh, uh, excuse me, do you mind? The gameplay. It's probably why you play most games. And KF2 delivers on it in four main ways. The maps, the Zeds, the weaponry, and the visuals. First, the maps. They're cool, and there's a fuck ton of them. 38 to be exact, excluding the infinite supply of workshop maps. Each map has its own feel and environment which can really vary the gameplay. Some maps are bright and open and let you move around the Zeds and never get too overwhelmed. Some maps have long, narrow corridors and dark color schemes that keep you on edge at all times. They get really creative with some of them like Airship, which has traps you can trigger, and finally a different voice actor than that you fucking French girl, cool. Big Daddy Lockhart. Those, Those must be some pretty some good drugs, drugs. Uh, can, can, can I have some? And then there's Elysium, I don't know what the fuck's going on there. Okay, okay, the maps are pretty cool, but what's the reason you play a Horde survival game? The Horde, the enemies the Zeds. And just like the maps, there's a fuck ton of them. So we're just gonna quick fire them all off. First, we got the small guys. The three musketeers of being basic. The screaming hag. Invisible bitch. Sword arm. Sword arm too. A fucking robot for some reason. And personally, my favorite. Ugly, hideous, horrendous, friendless, bitchless, maidenless spider that not a single soul loved. Yeah, I'm oddly dislike him. Uh, next we got the big boys, my actual favorite, Tubasaur. Look how beautiful he is. He just wants to give you a big hug. A guy that picked up a massive plasma cannon for some reason. And we've got the Macca's trio, Big Mac, Mac Jr., and the Quarter Pounder. No way, he's actually called that. And that's- Wait, you thought that was all of them? Ha! <laughs> no! We've still got the bosses. Tubasaur. But now, he's back and even bigger than before. 
and has also gained the ability to shoot out little acid gremlins. The Grand Big Mac. Big Mac, but bigger. We have uh, Daddy Issues, who shoots you with plasma, cries about her dad, and wants you to be part of an electrical circuit. Would you like to be part of an electrical circuit? Next up is THE Daddy Issues, a mix of Soldier, Heavy, and a Volatile from Dying Light, and he's the one the matriarch is crying about. Daddy, how do I get through to you? And finally we have, uh, a German scientist from World War II that attacks you with gas. Hmm, don't think I should make a joke about that one. <clears throat> okay, yikes, now that that's over. Okay, now we know about the Zeds, how are we gonna get rid of them? Well, I'm glad you asked. With a little thing I like to call high explosive <laughs> weapons. The weapons are undoubtedly the best part of Killing Floor 2. And if you disagree, I'm so sorry, but your parents dropping you as a child doesn't excuse the person you've become. The sheer variety of weapons is fucking mind-blowing. It's so cool. Each of the weapons belongs to one of the classes, and when using it, it'll give you XP to that class, to take advantage of that class's perks. But it doesn't matter if your class is level 5 or your max level. Most of the weapons are so awesome to use. And yes, I did say most. A lot of the weapons are at least useful at killing the Zeds. A few of them, however, just feel underwhelming. And I wonder why. Like, they're cool, and they look pretty threatening, yet they do jack shit. Like, a lot of the melee weapons just feel off. Like they just brush in front of the enemy, or go through them or something, you know? If I'm hitting the Zeds with something called the Bone Crusher, you think it would have more oomph, you know? And then juxtaposingly, we've got the option to literally pay to win. Most of the best weapons in this game are locked behind a sweet, sweet paywall. Like the Glock 18 is actually just fucking broken, it's so fun. At least if you're playing with someone else who has the DLC, you can just do some, so that's nice. But we can't finish talking about the guns without mentioning Zed Time. Zed time is just hacks, but good hacks. Anytime something cool happens, like you get a nice headshot or blow up a big group of Zeds, the game goes into slow motion, so you can line up the most insane shots without the worry of getting shot on from behind. Zed time actually leads into the final part of the gameplay, the visuals. Again, the goats tripwire making awesome guns, animate them at like 200 frames per second or something like that, so even when time slows down, the animations are still super smooth. Next, and probably the most obvious part of the visuals, the gore. The gore really adds the killing floor atmosphere to this game, with some settings to even make it more extreme. It really is quite satisfying to watch the entrails of those annoying little arachnid shits fly across the room and confirm that they aren't going to be getting up anytime soon. Although it can be a bit much at times, coupled with all the lasers and explosions and bullets flying everywhere, it can overwhelm you a bit, and you don't know what you're supposed to be doing anymore. But if you're playing with only a few people, it shouldn't cause any major seizures. Hopefully. Well, that was Killing Floor 2, one of the best British people murdering simulators I've ever played. If you're wondering why I haven't said the word zombie through this entire video, it's because if they hear you say it instead of Zed, they, they will come for you, and they'll eat your heart out, like a fleshy little s- Oh shit, I said it, didn't I? Uh, well, make sure to subscribe or something and, uh, uh, oh fuck!